All right, let's install the Fermion platform. I'm inside of the Git repo. I went to AWS slash Terraform. I already have Terraform locally installed. Uh, so I'm just gonna init this, uh, get it all connected to my Amazon account. And then I'm gonna do a Terraform apply and I'm gonna enable Let's Encrypt so that SSL certificates are automatically provisioned for every app. We'll see that come up later. Uh, now we're gonna kick off the Terraform apply. Uh, this is going to log into our AWS account and set up all of the things that it needs uh, in order to run Fermion on a single virtual machine inside of Amazon. Uh, this part's going to take a little while, so what I'm going to do is just kind of skip through this and pick things up again once as the install wraps up in about a minute. All right, so it's taken about a minute to run that full install into AWS. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, copy our uh, new, newly minted private key for the virtual machine and we're gonna log into that VM. So I've copied the key, I'm gonna change the mode on the key file and then I'm gonna SSH into the new VM that our Terraform script just created. And from there, I'll be able to see what's going on with Nomad. Uh, this is a cool little trick where Terraform output can be used to kind of grab the IP, the elastic IP of our, our virtual machine, and then we can connect right away. And there we go. All right, so what we want to do is tail the log file for cloud init. So cloud init is running its initialization script. That's loading a bunch of stuff into the Nomad uh, instance there. So here what we're seeing is uh, we're watching Nomad to see if Nomad can install traffic, which it did. Now it's installing Bindle, which is the package service uh, that runs inside of Fermion. And as soon as Bindle is done, it's also going to install uh, uh, Hippo, which is the dashboard view. Uh, that we use to log into for, again, Fermion functions like a platform as a service like Heroku or something like that. And so Hippo is that visual dashboard that we can log into in a moment. We'll, we'll, we'll do just that as we take a look at our application. Now, once Hippo is installed, we're pretty much ready to go and we can start developing uh, our new application. So you can see a whole bunch of, of uh, environment variables got printed out there. At the end, what we're going to do is locally source those environment variables so that uh, we can easily, because Hippo will basically read those as well spin and use those things to automatically attach us so we don't have to do anything particularly elaborate. So we can see the Hippo URL is set. So when we run Hippo login to log into that Hippo dashboard, it just automatically picks everything up from our environment variables. All right. Time to start developing an app. Uh, we're gonna use spin templates. We're gonna install a bunch of default templates that we can use to scaffold out applications really quickly in spin. And we're gonna create an HTTP service in Rust. Okay, so spin new HTTP-Rust, and we're gonna call it my app. We're gonna fill in a couple of the fields here. And there we go. Okay, so at this point, if we look in my app, we've got an application already. So we can skip straight to building this application. So spin build will compile the whole thing. Again, the default one is like a hello world kind of thing. So it's not gonna be terribly elaborate, nor is it gonna take a long time. Uh, now we just do a spin deploy, and that is going to push this up into our newly minted Fermion instance and give us back a URL, which is where the app is running. But before we take a look at the app, we're gonna go take a look at the dashboard. Uh, so we're gonna copy the Hippo password in here and uh, using pbcopy, then we're gonna open the Hippo dashboard. Okay, so we know our username is admin, the default username is always admin. And then we just copied that uh, password so we can copy paste and here we are. So we've already deployed my, my app. We can see it's running version 0.1.0. Uh, we can see that the app looks like it's running. When we click to open it though, ah, ah, so SSL is still being provisioned. Now remember we used, uh, we set up SSL to automatically provision us a certificate. That takes a couple of minutes sometimes. Let's encrypt uh, is, is not, all, it can be under load and can be a little bit slow, but there we go. Okay, so we saw Hello Fermi on there. Now let's take a look at our code. All right, we're gonna go click into the source folder. There's our lib.rs, there's our HTTP handler. We're just gonna add an exclamation point at the end. So it's gonna say, hello, Furion. Uh, and then we're gonna change the version as we redeploy. So now we're on version 0.1.1. And we're gonna, again, just rerun that build, which will be nice and fast this time. And then we're gonna redeploy. And again, that's pushing it from our local up into the Fermion uh, instance that we just installed. And says it's uploaded. 
And let's see, there we go, 0 0.1.1. Now, if we click through, uh, again, there are a couple things going on behind the scenes. We're getting our SSL certificates moved. We're getting traffic rerouting to our new version. So it might take, you know, 10, 15 seconds, and then there we go. Hello, Fermion. All right, so what we've just done is we've installed Fermion on AWS into our account. Uh, we have, uh, and, and we used Terraform to do that. Then we created a new application using Spin and we deployed that application, upgraded it and deployed it again in just a few minutes. Thanks a lot. I hope you enjoy using Fermion.